Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says his country has entered the second stage of the war with Hamas after ramping up ground operations in Gaza. Speaking with War Cabinet Minister Benny Gantz and Defence Minister Yoav Gallant, Netanyahu described the conflict as Israel's second war of independence. He said their goal was to destroy Hamas's military capabilities and its control of the Gaza Strip. Israel again warned civilians to evacuate the northern part of the besieged territory. Israel Defence Forces have continued intense bombing of the Gaza Strip, ignoring international calls for a humanitarian ceasefire. Cell phone and internet services are gradually being restored in Gaza, having been knocked out. Gazans take in the devastation caused by Israel's heaviest attacks yet on Gaza. The bombardment flattening more homes, destroying some of the last refuges for families seeking safety from the violence. Israel says its troops are now on the ground in Gaza amid a, quote, new phase in its war on the Islamist militant group Hamas. The Israel Defence Forces told Gazans to move south immediately. But it's a warning many may not receive, with almost all communications to the enclave knocked out. The bombing of the telecommunications infrastructure places the civilian population in grave danger. Ambulances and civil defence teams are no longer able to locate the injured or thousands of people estimated to be still under the rubble. And civilians are no longer able to receive updated information on where they can access humanitarian relief and where they may be in less danger. And as the destruction in Gaza intensifies, those fleeing are running out of places to go. I'm driving people who want to leave Khan Yunus. They're afraid of the dire situation. The bombing is indiscriminate. Neither children nor adults are spared, nor women or the elderly. No one. The Hamas-led health authorities report more than 7,700 people have died so far in the attacks. A devastating toll which is likely to rise as Israel's military pushes further into Gaza. Rebecca Ridders is in Ashdod in southern Israel. Rebecca, you described the sights and sounds of the beginning of this escalation yesterday. What's happening there today? Well, Anthony, as we now know, as was confirmed by Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu last night, we're seeing the second phase of this war. And that began on Friday evening with the, the beginnings of a ground invasion. Israeli troops entering Gaza, not just for these so-called limited raids that they've been doing in the lead up to Friday night, but now something more permanent, accompanied by the heaviest bombardment in the Strip that we've seen so far in three weeks of war. That was followed by last night, also an incredibly heavy bombardment from where we were standing in the city of Starot, just a couple of kilometres from the Gaza border. You could actually feel the waves from the airstrikes. So imagining what it must be like as a civilian in Gaza, in the dark, with at last night no communications, waiting to see whether one of those strikes was going to hit your building. It's really impossible to imagine to put yourself in those shoes. Uh, we know that from Benjamin Netanyahu that this is going to be uh, a long operation, as he was saying last night, that this is going to take a long time. There are a couple of scenarios that people are talking about that we're looking at, and that's whether or not they will continue with this kind of uh, limited ground invasion and try and do smaller incursions into areas. We know that they're trying to dismantle part of the tunnel networks and that they're obviously trying to get to uh, as many Hamas militants to try and uh, take away their military capabilities, while at the same time balancing the hostage situation, more than 200 Israeli hostages still in that Gaza Strip area. They still don't know exactly where they are and obviously don't want to do as limited limited damage to, to, to the people, the Israelis uh, there, who are, who are potentially in those tunnels. So we've, we're, that's one scenario, or the fact that they might be paving the way for what will be uh, a bigger ground invasion. We know that there are hundreds of thousands of troops uh, amassed at the border ready to go in, and a lot of equipment as well. And as I said, Benjamin Netanyahu is saying this is going to take a very long time. We see that the military have said that, that without a ground invasion, they can't achieve their goals. So it is expected that that might happen. And we're seeing calls again uh, for 
for civilians who still might be in the north to head further south to relative, relatively safe, safer areas. Rebecca, there are reports uh, from afar that communication networks in Gaza are returning. Is that what you're hearing as well? Yes, we've had uh, confirmation from one of the providers in uh, the Gaza Strip that they are resto slowly restoring uh, communications there. I haven't been able to contact anybody that uh, we're in contact with so far, but that has been pretty constant over the last three weeks as people try and desperately seek um, charging stations. They're going to local shops where they might have a solar panel charging station that they can use. So people with very limited electricity also not being able to connect to networks, but we are seeing that the power is slowly, uh, sorry, that the telecommunication services are slowly being restored. That was a real concern. Uh, the few people that could get messages out either via satellite or perhaps with an Israeli SIM card or foreign SIM card were were, um, you know, speaking of intolerable conditions and not being able to c communicate with friends or loved ones to find out if they're OK. And also, of course, the must ne much needed emergency services not being able to be contacted or told where to go when airstrikes were happening. So that is uh, a small sliver of good news this morning. Rebecca Ridders from Ashdod in southern Israel. Thanks so much. For some analysis of the latest developments, we can talk to military expert Mike Martin of King's College in London. Welcome to you, Mike. I wonder what is Israel's strategy now in what it calls the, the second stage of this operation in Gaza? It's very difficult to get precise information, but it does appear that uh, Israel rather than launching a full invasion, is, is having an incursion. And it seems like there will be a series of incursions over the coming weeks and months where they move into an area and try and control it. Um, and that's really, I guess, reflective of the fact that it's incredibly difficult to move in the urban terrain. Hamas is very well prepared. It's been there for 30 years. There are extensive tunnel systems. And so I think Israel has to will be looking to move into small areas at a time and then and then move forward from that. Mike, exactly how difficult is it going to be? Uh, you outlined some of the, the terrain there for us as this Israeli operation shifts right down onto street level in Gaza. Well, Israel has set out a goal of completely destroying Hamas. And that's basically impossible in a military sense. It's a, an insurgent or a militant or a terrorist group, call it what you like. Uh, it's completely mixed in with the civilian population. And there's all of this infrastructure. There's 30 years of infrastructure that Hamas have been building above ground, below ground. And, and as, as Israel, for instance, destroys buildings, which we've seen lots of photos of, they become very easy structures to defend and so there is no military way to completely destroy Hamas. The president of Iran has said that Israel has crossed what he called a red line now. How serious are those words? How serious of a threat is that? I, I think we have to take comments from the Iranian leadership as being mostly aimed at their own population. Iran, as your viewers will probably know, have had a number of problems recently over, for example, the wearing of the hijab. So there's quite a lot of unrest in Iran. And so the war, one way of viewing the war for the Iranian leadership is that it's a useful distraction from its own domestic troubles. So when it talks of red lines and ramping up the pressure on Israel, uh, it's often aimed at its own domestic population that it's having problems with. How significant, Mike, is the build-up of uh, hardware from the United States uh, and their naval, their naval fleet? So I think I think there's two things really. Uh, first is it's a big signal. So uh, the president of Turkey has been making comments over the last 24 hours. So it's a signal to him not to get involved. It's a signal to the Iranians not to get their proxies like Hezbollah uh, too active and too involved. And also what it does is it gives the Americans options. So they've got two aircraft carrier groups there, a number of missile firing destroyers. And what, you know, particularly with the hostage situation or with perhaps some of the Iranian proxies, again, Hezbollah, um, it just 
gives the Americans options for dealing with, for example, rocket attacks or for perhaps launching operations to try and uh, get some of those hostages back. Mike Martin in London, thank you so much. Thank you.